So Pinocchio goes off to meet the coachman, and the coachman has already said he's collecting bad little boys, and he's, he's, he's got them all in the coach. They're all delinquent types here. And the ticket on the coach was the Ace of Spades, which is what Pinocchio is holding. And he's with this character here called Lampwick, and that's an interesting name. So he's the, he's the thing that burns in the middle of a light, Lampwick. And that's interesting because it's a play on Lucifer, because Lucifer means bringer of light, and so Lampwick is a play on that. And Lampwick is really a nasty piece of work. He's got this false arrogance about him. He's got this like cynical voice, really deeply cynical voice. And he's only, I don't know how old he's supposed to be in this, maybe 12 or something like that, or 13. And so he's one of those kids who's, who's become prematurely cynical. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about that. So I used to live in Montreal. Um, I lived in a poor neighborhood. And uh, one day I was out in the back alley building a fence because I was putting a little fence around my, back, my little tiny backyard. And there was a house across the alley down the street a ways where there was a lot of like not good partying. A lot of bikers were hanging around there. And I knew there was a little kid that lived there as well. Anyways, I was out there in the back alley pounding away on my fence and these little kids came up and they were little. They were like three and four years old, hey? And they spoke uh, Jouel, right? Uh, kind of uh, really heavily accented Quebecois French, and so I, my French isn't good, so I could hardly understand them, but they were, wa they were watching me hammer, and they got a little closer, and they had one, one kid who was clearly the leader, had a real scowl on his face, hey? and so they were watching, and I kind of motioned to one of them that they could use the hammer, and that kid said, uh, and I, I'm going to mangle this, but he said, je vole, or something like that, and what it meant is, I'll steal that, and so I thought, you know, and then he came over and he tugged on it and he wanted me to take it and he was quite angry and, well, I wasn't going to let him take it. And then so, so I couldn't engage him, I couldn't get him to play, you know, and his buddies were sort of hanging around behind him and they wouldn't come and play because he wouldn't. And so he was hostile right away to me. And then, <laughs> so the fence piece was laying out in the alley and these little monsters started running across it, which I thought was really remarkable, you know, but it was terrible at the same time because they were really little kids. That shouldn't be happening when you're like three or four. If that's happening at that age, things are not good. And so that kid was already like seriously not happy with the world. And, you know, I'd been studying antisocial behavior for a long time by that point, And I knew that the kids who are destined to jail later in their lives are kids who are rough and tough when they're two years old, but then don't get socialized. Or maybe worse, they get anti-socialized, which is exactly what happened to this kid. He'd obviously been ignored and abused. Um, certainly no one had ever played with him in any real way because he, he wouldn't play. And it's not good if a kid is that little and you can't get them to play. Something's gone seriously wrong because they're so playful at that age that like it's like 90% of them. Anyway, so they were running back and forth on this fence, I thought, stomping on it, you know? And I was right there. I thought, well, I, first of all, I thought that was remarkable, but I also thought it was absolutely horrifying because, you know, in some sense I could see where this kid was headed and why at that early stage in his life. It's really, it's not a pleasant thing to behold, but there was nothing that could be done about it. And that's kind of what this Lampwick is like. He's prematurely cynical. This kid was already cynical and he was like four years old. You know, most kids don't get cynical till they're teenagers, you know, and then often they don't get completely cynical and usually they more or less grow out of it. But he had, it had happened to him much earlier. So this Lampwick character, he'd already, he's already decided that he knows everything, that everyone else is, his opinion is worth nothing and that there's nothing in culture or society that holds any use, utility whatsoever for someone like him. Now you can imagine developing that way if you were raised in a family where people were gener generally lying to you and that they randomly treated you or neglected you and that you couldn't discern anything about them that was admirable or positive. You know, of course you'd assume that the whole structure is corrupt and that you had to take care of yourself and no one else. Well, not of course. Not everyone assumes that under those situations. I shouldn't say of course. But it's a, but it's a logical set of conclusions. So, and of course, it's proportionate to some degree to how much abuse you take. Although, there are lots of stories of people who've been terribly abused as children who grew up to be, you know, kind, remarkable, responsible, thoughtful people who were absolutely opposed to abuse instead of propagating it. There's no direct causal pathway. That you'll ever do Two can be as bad as one It's the loneliest number since the number one uh.